hey everyone, it's Ellie from the Max on Training team. And in this two-part tutorial, I'm gonna take you through how to create this Nike swoosh animation using only Cinema 4D Lite and After Effects. In this first part, we'll be modeling and animating the Nike swoosh logo and shoelace. And in part two, we'll be lighting, texturing, and finally rendering in After Effects. Let's dive in. So we're starting off in After Effects and I've got my composition settings set to 1920 by 1080. 30 frames per second and a five second duration. This is important because we're going to match our C4D file to these as well. So everyone that has access to After Effects has Cinema 4D Lite. All you have to do is go to File, New and Max on Cinema 4D File. Then just name your C4D file. And then it's gonna open up C4D version 26. If it's the first time you're opening Lite, you will need to create a Maxon account, but it should be really quick and easy. Then you're in. So the first thing we wanna do is we want to match our render settings to our comp settings in After Effects. So if I click this button here, I can change my output to 1920 by 1080, and I've got 30 frames per second in here. Now we're good to go. We're gonna start building up our scene. So in this first part, we're gonna look at modeling and animating the Nike swoosh logo and the shoelace. And then in part two, we're going to light texture and render back in After Effects. So let's build up our studio backdrop. Inside the asset browser, we have a bunch of objects and materials that we can use. And one of those is a studio backdrop. So if I just double click that, it's going to load it inside of my viewport. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the Nike swoosh logo into a fun animation. So if I open up Illustrator, I've got the Nike tick logo. All I did was separate it into three different parts. And that means they're gonna be animated separately inside of C4D, which should be fun. And all they are, are paths inside of Illustrator. So you could have your own logo in here, you can use this project file, or you can use some text, just make sure it's a path. And then all you have to do is when you save your Illustrator file, you need to make sure, let me just call it something different. You need to make sure you're saving it as Illustrator 8. This is really important if you're working in C4D Lite. If you're following along and you're working in the full version of Cinema, then you absolutely can use Illustrator 2020. So I don't actually need to save it because I've already saved it. And then what we want to do is we want to come back into Cinema and then I'm going to drag and drop my Illustrator file in. Here we go. We have our logo. We have our path inside of Cinema 4D and it comes in as what we call a spline. So if I add a cube, we can see that our, um, our logo is, is very small. So if I hold T down, I can scale this up and we can just make it a little bit bigger, a little bit more of a default size. And then I can copy and I can paste it into my viewport. Let me just change the color of these splines to black just so we can see them a little bit clearer. Cool, so now we have our logo inside of C4D. I'm just gonna delete that material. It comes in on the studio, but we don't need that. We're gonna create our own in part two. And then I'm just gonna hit render. And so we can see that we don't actually see our spline or our path inside of C4D. And that's because we need to turn it into geometry first. So how do we do that? Well, we don't need this null. It's just kind of like a, um, a group inside of Photoshop or like a layer. And we're going to use some of our generators. So all these green icons are generators. They're gonna generate geometry. And the extrude is going to extrude our splines out. So if I drag and drop my path into my extrude, we now have geometry. All we need to do is do that for each individual piece. And now we have all of our geometry here. So if I render this down, we can see we have our Nike swoosh. So what can we do? We can highlight all of our extrude. We can come into our object tab, but we can control our offset. And this is our depth of our 3D geometry. 
I'm going to set this to 50 centimeters. Then I'm going to add some beveling. We're going to create some nice rounding. So I'm just going to increase the size here. And now we can see we have this really nice little bevel going on. So really quickly, with access C4D Lite for After Effects, we've taken our Illustrator file, we've turned it into geometry. So now, how do we animate this? The way that we do that is we have to turn it into MoGraph geometry. And when we have MoGraph geometry, we can then use our effectors and fields to create really fun and simple animation. And it's really quick to set up and it involves very few keyframes. So I'm going to grab my fracture from my MoGraph menu and I'm just going to drop in my different logo elements. And I do want to change my mode to explode segments. This is important. So now it's seen as individual bits of geometry and it's MoGraphable, official term. So with my fracture selected, I'm going to come in and grab one of my effectors. Because we're in the light version, it is a limited version, so we only have access to plain and random, but with these two, we can still create some pretty interesting and powerful results. So if I select my plane, we'll see everything goes up on the y-axis by 100 centimeters. This is the default. So we can use the plane to control position, rotation, and scale. What we can also do is we can use the fields area to define where this effect is having an effect. So if I grab a linear field, we then get this bounding box. And if I, as I move my linear field, you'll see how this effect is, is taking place on my geometry. So the direction by default is set to plus X. I'm actually gonna change it to minus X. So originally in the final render, we had our pieces coming in left to right, but just for a bit of variation, we're gonna do right to left for this one. So if I pull my linear field all the way to the right, all of this is having an effect. But what we want to do is we want it to start out of shot. We want our animation to begin uh, completely out of shot. So if I just increase this setting until this disappears, I can then use this linear field. We can animate this linear field across and now we are creating our animation really, really easily. So how do we actually, how do we actually animate this? How do we set up some keyframes so I don't have to just keep kind of, you know, pulling it along, which isn't ideal. Well, we can use our timeline. So our timeline down here, we have our normal sort of like um, play, pause, rewind buttons. And we also have our number of frames. So we have, if we press command D, our project settings 30 frames per second. So we have a three second animation. But remember in After Effects, we set up a five second animation. So if I just enter 150 frames, we now have a five second animation on our timeline to play with. And so what we wanna do, we want to keyframe our X position of our linear field because this is what is creating this animation. So at frame zero, the very start of my animation, I'm going to set a keyframe here. And it's this little diamond here is our set keyframe button. So I'm gonna do that. And then at frame 60, I'm gonna pull my linear field all the way over until my logo is completely here. And I'm gonna set another keyframe. Now, as you play through, we can see we have our animation. So now we've got our logo and animation. We now want to just set up our composition quickly. We're gonna set up a composition camera just by dropping this inside of here. And then we can look through our camera and reposition it by hitting that icon. And now as I move around, I'm repositioning my camera. Let's change our focal length and let's just zero out a few of these settings and let's find a shot that we are happy with. So that's good. It doesn't need to be perfect because I'm sure you all will be able to perfect this when you follow along. Okay, so this is looking this is looking nice. So I can come out of my camera and I can continue to move around and it will leave my camera exactly where it is. So one quick thing, if I press NB, we can see the segments or our subdivisions of all of our geometry in our scene. And the trouble is, here, we're getting this weird little sort of um, 
overlapping effect. And how do we fix that? Well, first of all, we want to find which extrude it is. So it's this first one. And inside of our spline, we're going to set this to uniform. And now we can see it's actually smoothed out that edge there. Perfect. So we're no longer getting that strange overlapping happening. Okay, so now let's create our shoelace animation. Let's model our shoelace. So I'm actually gonna hit this icon here and come into our front view. And let's just hide our camera for now by making the top dot red. So we're gonna draw our spline and we need this button here. This tool is a draw spline. So if I just click and move around, I'm able to create a spline or a path inside a C4D and I can press escape to come out of it. Or if I click and click and hold down, we can create these curved bezier handles. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to create a nice curved shoelace. And it doesn't need to be perfect because it can be adjusted later on. So let's sort of come a bit out of here. And let's just sort of just sort of reposition some of this, perhaps, maybe round like that. Okay, we press escape. And now we can actually reposition some of these handles around here and maybe around here if we want to. Okay. So I'm gonna stay in my four views for now, just so I can see my perspective, my top, my right and my front. And then with my shoelace spline, I want to change my type to B spline. And what you'll see is it really smooths out all of those curves now. And then we still get access to all of our points. So let's reposition this into the middle. So if you hold down shift as you move, it will move in five increments. And now let's go back to points mode and let's just start to reposition some of these handles. So let's pull this up and then we want to pull this down perhaps and maybe out. Okay. And then which one is this one? So do we want to come maybe out like this and pull that in? And so of course you will want to spend a little bit more time on this, but for me, I don't want to spend too long because we want to get to the other parts of the tutorial, but that seems to look okay. That looks okay for now. Yeah, it looks okay. As I said, all of this stuff can be changed later on as and when we want it to. So let's pull that over there. There we go. Okay, cool. Right, so how do we convert this into 3D geometry? Well, we need another one of our generators, which is a sweep generator. And what the sweep's going to do is it's going to sweep across this shoelace spline. So if I drop that into here, ah, we're not actually seeing any geometry. And what we need to do, we need to use another spline that's going to be the shape that is swept along this first spline here. So because we're making a shoelace, which is a cylinder, we can use a circle and we can adjust the radius to maybe something like five. And then we can drop the circle in between. And now the circle is being swept along this shoelace spline. We can increase or decrease this to really sort of define the size of our shoelace. And then at any point we can continue to adjust these points. So maybe we want to come sort of like up like this. And maybe we go down on this one. Something like that, perhaps. Great. So now how do we animate this? Well, first of all, let's actually just increase some of our subdivisions because again, we're not getting a whole bunch of rounding. So if we come into our spline, again, we can go to uniform and then we can increase this number to get a nice smooth edge. We can also do the same thing 
on our circle spline to create some more rounding on here as well. So now we can animate this by just animating our start and end growth. What we also want to do is we want to make this look a little bit more like a shoelace by adding those, you know, those like end plastic bits, like the toggles. And we can create those by using a little bit of a trick with our beveling inside of here. So inside of my sweep, we're going to add a curve bevel. We're going to add some sizing, so maybe like a 2.5. And then we can see we're starting to get that shape. But if we extend the shape and then maybe do 10 centimeters, we can see, okay, we're getting a little bit closer. And now if we take our curve graph and we just sort of pull this point down, we can use this to really perfect that toggle. And now as we pull this over, we're getting our toggles on the start and the end and it's looking a lot more like a shoelace. And so let's keyframe some of these settings inside of here. Let's start with my end growth on 0% and then at frame 100, let's set this all the way over to something like 98. And now we want to animate our start growth as well. So maybe on frame 80, we can do our start growth. And then on frame 130, we can make that all the way until that disappears. And now this is what we have. We have our Nike logo animation with our shoelace coming in and out. So let's save that there by hitting Command S. And in the next part, we're going to look at how we can light and texture this, bring it back into After Effects and get that final render done. I'll see you in the next part.